Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 2nd. I just thought I'd do an update here with this windstorm moving up the coastline here. We've got some new wind advisories and some new high wind warnings across the portions of Washington. And there's wind warnings across some of Southwest BC as well. A little surprised that Portland doesn't have some of the advisories here from the coastal areas here, but they don't have it up yet. Maybe they'll put it up here later tonight. But look at some of the wind speeds we can expect from the system as it barrels into Vancouver Island as we go on in through the day tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, taking a look here, you can see this advisory is across the Puget Sound here. High wind warnings for the San Juans and for Whatcom County there, Bellingham, Friday Harbor, northwest Washington coastline there. Advisories down towards uh, ocean shores here as well. And that's where the Seattle office cuts off right there. So Portland has decided not to put wind advisories up right now. But it's going to be pretty windy there across Cape Disappointment, some of Long Beach here. So a little surprised at that. A story is probably going to get some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour as well. So heads up for that activity. And now this is a Seattle metro here. Winds 25, 35, gusting 45 tomorrow. Nuisance power is just possible. Don't get caught near those big trees when these big gusty winds are coming in there. You know how this goes. Those big branches can kill just as well as some of those big trees when they fall. This is out for the northwest Washington coast. 30 to 40 miles per hour. Gust to 60. Clearwater Forks, La Push, Nia Bay, Queets out there. Watch out for those big winds coming through there. There are some damaging winds possible. New, typical nuisance power outages. You guys know the drill out there. This is Friday Harbor Bellingham out there, 30 to 40, gust to 60. So watch out for that. And again, this is 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. If I did not say that already. So San Juan, wa Western Whatcom County out there tomorrow. You know the drill as far as damage that can be included with those kind of wind speeds. This is for Vancouver, B.C., gust to 90 kilometers per hour tomorrow here. So watch out. There is that wind advisory, and this extends out their portions of southwest B.C. as well. Now, taking a look at the windy map, this gives us a good idea of what's going on currently and what's coming our way. Is this low pressure system is going to move like we saw into Vancouver Island here. You can see it out there on the visible satellite imagery. Pretty menacing looking out there. So these winds are going to start earlier than morning up the Oregon-Washington coastline here, then really spread across the region as we go through late morning and afternoon tomorrow. Now, this is looking at the European here. So this is looking at it Friday morning. You can see that low pressure just going to move into Vancouver Island with that tight gradient off to the southeast there. And that's what's going to bring those strong winds across the region here. And after that storm, we've got another one coming, but probably not as windy with that system shown there. So right now we're just kind of focusing on this first one there here. Then this is going to be impacting us tomorrow starting in the morning hours. This is 925 millibars, 2,500 feet. And check out that low pressure system out there. Spawning some pretty big winds just off the surface or across the Pacific Northwest. So watch out if you're in the higher terrain as well. You're not going to get wind advisories and high wind warnings across some of the Cascades, the Olympic Mountains and whatnot. Coastal ranges here, but have a heads up for these strong winds moving in through starting tomorrow morning on in through tomorrow night. Now taking a look here, this is 100 meter wind speeds. As we go on from about 10 a.m. to 1, a 1 p.m. here on the European, the winds really pick up across the San Juans here. Some portions of eastern Vancouver Island, the Washington, Oregon coast should be rocking and rolling pretty good as we go on in uh, to the noon hour or so tomorrow. And that could extend down into the Puget Sound, as you saw with some of those wind advisory in effect. This is the European 18Z. So this is put out 10 a.m. this morning here. That's when the model started to run anyway. And you can see those bigger winds across the northwest interior here. Not too much showing up on the European across the Puget Sound, but could get some gusts towards the 40 mile per hour range there. Everett 45, you start to get some potential for some power outages once you start getting into the 40s there. And you can see the bigger winds along the Washington, Oregon coastline there and up towards the Vancouver Island coastline as well. This is looking the high resolution Canadian. You can clearly see those high winds across the Northwest interior. This would include Whidbey Island. So just have a heads up if you're down towards Whidbey Island, you know, Anacortes, Camano Island out there as well, as well as the immediate coastline line Washington Oregon like I said uh, don't be caught off guard here along the Oregon coast just because there's no wind advisories up. You can see Long Beach well up into the 50 mile per hour range here, as well as Astoria could be up towards 50 miles per hour as well. This is for the Canadian, the, high, the lower resolution model here. And you can see Seattle about 43, big winds on the coast. You get the picture here. Now, this is looking at the NAM 3KM, just kind of comparing things here. It looks has a little bit of a bigger hit for the South Sound here, up towards 50 miles per hour possible for Tacoma and Olympia, if you believe the NAM, and some really big winds there along the Oregon-Washington coast. So, again, a little bit wondering about not having an advisory up there. But anyway... Taking a look at the HER now, you can see big winds across the northwest interior as well. So you guys get the picture here of what areas to expect these big winds, including some of the higher terrain as you go on in through the day tomorrow. This is in Vancouver Island out there. You can see some gusts up over 100 kilometers per hour out there. Pretty 
nice windy day out there on the Vancouver Island coastline there. This is Bellingham International here. Look at this. You know, some of these gusts are up over 50 miles per hour showing up in the European ensemble runs here. And like I said before in previous videos, the European these last few months has been kind of underdoing wind speeds here. So I'm kind of leaning towards the NAM and the HER a little bit on some of these wind speeds coming up here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some gusts up around 50 miles per hour for Bellingham coming up here. This is Tillamook. I mean, this is no joke either. These are pretty windy conditions here. As you can see, the ensemble mean is into the lower 50s shown here. Seattle Tacoma, this has been uptrending here as we go as well. Now there's a few ensemble members showing 48 plus mile per hour gusts in the Seattle vicinity there. And the mean is just up towards 40 miles per hour there. So just have a heads up, folks. We've had some nice weather around the Puget Sound the last couple of days. So don't be caught off guard with the storm moving through tomorrow. This is National Weather Service Seattle here. And you can see they're painting this picture across the Seattle Metro 4045. A little bit weaker in the South Sound, according to the National Weather Service here. But you see these gusty winds along the coastline there. And you can see where the Seattle forecast office cuts off versus the Portland office that does cover portions of southwest Washington there. Now, this is another good graphic from the National Weather Service Seattle. Individual areas with maximum wind gust forecast here. You can see Bellingham expecting mid-50s there. That's no joke right there. Westport forks to Hola out there. Look at Friday Harbor 58. That's starting to get towards severe wind. Um, area there. So we want to watch out for these winds tomorrow, you know, especially because people have been probably getting a little bit used to the nice weather the last couple of days. I know I am. Now looking at this Quileute Airport here, kind of downtrending a little bit in the precipitation amounts, but still up around an inch as we bring this system in here. But then a wetter system coming on in through early next week. This is Seattle Tacoma shown here. Not too bad, really. I mean, it's, you're looking at a third of an inch or so of rainfall. You're going to notice the rain out there, but not just a huge washout coming for the Seattle Metro shown here. Now, this is looking by Saturday morning here, about 10 a.m., 24-hour total here, about a third of an inch in Seattle. Bigger amounts for the Olympics, the Washington Coast, Vancouver Island here. Pretty typical for the higher terrain as well, but not that much rainfall for Portland, Seattle, Metro, and some of the Willamette Valley not getting much at all the further south you go. And you can see the big rain shadow effect going on here for eastern BC, Washington, and Oregon as well. Now, this is looking at total snow before we wrap this up here, and you can see we're going to get some snowfalls we go through tomorrow night. Not that much really for Snoqualmie Pass, at least not to the according to the European model here. But we do have a couple rounds coming through here. But so by the time maybe Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, you might have another four to six inches total new snowfall amounts here across the Snoqualmie Pass. Bigger amounts up towards Stevens. You could get up over 10 inches closer to a foot here. And of course, we're not worried about any lowland snow, not with this round anyway, right now. But you can see that snowfall piling up across some of BC, the Oregon Cascades, Northeast Oregon. So heads up if you're traveling off into the higher terrain, anywhere across Pacific Northwest here with these next two systems. And also one more thing before we go, the radar upgrade there on the Langley radar it has been done. That's very welcome here. And yeah, so they decided to do that in the winter time here, but they got it up, you know, up to speed here and got to be thankful for that. But anyway, taking a look here, yeah, that satellite imagery, pretty nice, pretty big storm system there. It's almost taking the path, it actually is taking the path of a classic windstorm here. And a classic windstorm is when it comes down and it rakes the entire coast all the way from California, Washington, Oregon, Washington into British Columbia there. That uh, the track of these classic windstorms comes from the south and kind of can bring widespread wind damage across the region versus these ones that come more out of the southwest or westerly component there. So classic track is known as when it develops offshore here and spins up the coastline and takes a track like that into Vancouver Island or maybe even to the Washington coastline there. But interesting here, I just thought I'd do another update there. Hope you guys got a little bit more information on what's coming tomorrow. Don't get caught off guard here. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'll do my normal briefing tomorrow and there's a slight chance I might go out and try to cover this storm and I'll find a windy location and do a live stream maybe. So if I don't do my normal briefing, that's because I'm out chasing and that means our live stream is coming here tomorrow. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, yeah, so watch out for that windstorm coming in tomorrow. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.